Uh, hello, good morning. Um, my name is Ethan Galstead. I am the founder of Nagios and the president of Nagios Enterprises. And on behalf of our, thank you. On behalf of our entire company, I'd like to welcome you all to the first Nagios World Conference in North America. Um, it's a real honor to have you here. I know that many of you have traveled a long way to come here. Uh, it really is a world conference in that we have attendees from Europe, uh, Asia, Africa, Central and South America, and even faraway places like Canada. So uh, welcome to all of you. Uh, we certainly hope that you enjoy the conference and that you find it really useful. Um, we do have a, a pretty a varied experience level that's represented in the audience today. On the one hand, they're really experienced Nagios admins that have been running Nagios for a long time. Uh, they have a really complex setup. And on the other end of the spectrum, you've got people who have never deployed a monitoring solution before, have just heard about Nagios and wanted to learn more about what it can do. So what I'm going to do is just kind of start out with an overview of what Nagios is and what its capabilities are and why people find it useful. And then I'll go into some of the new things that are happening, some of the project updates, some of the new projects that we have recently come out with, and some of the new uh, things that are happening around the corner. So uh, with that, let's get started. Uh, first of all, uh, Nagios, you know, a lot of people ask what, what is Nagios when they're not familiar with it. It's most often thought of as an IT infrastructure monitoring application. And what that basically means is that it can monitor your networks, it can monitor your websites, your servers, your applications, and make sure they're working properly. Uh, and if they aren't working properly, if they crash, if they, you know, something starts to get out of whack, something starts to go wrong, uh, it can send them an alert, either an email or a text message or some other method, but it lets them know that something has gone wrong, and that allows them to fix the problem hopefully as quickly as possible. Uh, it also provides uh, performance graphing, so you can see disk usage over time on your servers or see memory usage over time. And that allows you to, to do some planning um, in terms of you know, determining when an upgrade is needed on your network uh, and also kind of diagnosing the source of problems. And finally, it does offer reporting capabilities, so you can generate a report and you can say, uh, I want to see the availability or the uptime of my websites or my servers over the past week or month. So th those are the basic things that Nagios can do. It has some more advanced features, but in a nutshell, that's kind of the high level overview of what it does. Um, when people talk about Nagios, there, there are two main pieces of software that are typically referred to as Nagios when they refer to monitoring software. The first is Nagios Core. Um, this was originally called NetSaint back in 1999 when I first did the release and it was renamed to Nagios in 2002, 2003. And we renamed it to Nagios Core about two years ago. It is an open source free monitoring application. That means if you're not familiar with open source, it doesn't cost you anything to acquire it. It still costs you something in terms of time to actually learn it, set it up, configure it, um, but there's no acquisition cost. Um, the other monitoring product that is, falls under the Nagios name is Nagios XI, and that's our commercial product. It's built on Nagios Core. It's got some additional stuff built into it, uh, and I'll go into Nagios XI in more detail in a later session today. Uh, but those are the two main things uh, that are often referred to as Nagios. We often get asked how many people use it, and it's really hard in open source to come up with numbers, but we do are able to track the number of people that do an install of Nagios or an upgrade. And in the last 12 months, we tracked over 3 million installations worldwide. So there's an incredible number of people that use it. Um, that's not to say there are 3 million people running the current version. It's 3 million instances of Nagios were installed. And if you're a Nagios admin, you sometimes know you, you might install a couple servers and blow them away and reinstall. Um, but that's still a lot of people that we're, we're hearing from. We actually get phone calls still from people that are running NetSaint still today. And that's uh, the software that's seven years old, eight years old. So it's a, a long time. It, you know, we ask them why they're still doing that, and they say it still works. So yeah, that's cool. But um, a lot of people use it. These are some examples of uh, the companies, the organizations that do use it. They're all across the board. Um, some very recognizable organizations up here, uh, government, military, commercial, nonprofit, educational. Everybody seems to use it. 
it doesn't really matter um, you know what sector you're in either horizontal or vertical if it's government education nonprofit or if you're in the retail industry or the transportation industry everybody has IT systems uh, computer systems and they rely on them really heavily and you don't really appreciate IT systems until they break and then you realize how much you rely upon them um, so it, people all across the board use it um, reasons why people choose Nagios if you're an IT admin like a network admin sys admin help desk staff um, they like it because Nagios allows them to see what's going on on their network um, you don't if you're you're the IT person the last thing you want to have happen is for somebody else to tell you that the system you're in charge of is broken you'd much rather know that ahead of time uh, before your end users do so they like the fact that they get advanced notification um, they get some awareness as, as to what's going on so they can fix the problem immediately or as quickly as possible um, and you know minimize downtime minimize frustration from end users and and the techs that use Nagios really like it um, from what I've, I'm, you know, I hear time and time again is they can really customize it and, and really tweak it to do a lot of different things that I never originally intended it to do but are very cool uses and um, you know, certainly very useful in the way people roll it out. So that's why IT guys like it. <clears throat> On the business organization side, solutions like Nagios, like monitoring solutions, are beneficial in that they help reduce downtime. They don't solve downtime. All systems crash. Um, there's no, really no way you can prevent that 100%. But systems like Nagios do prevent reduced downtime in that, you know, if they alert you that something is going wrong, you can fix it right away and hopefully shorten that window of downtime. Downtime costs businesses a lot, not only in terms of revenue, uh, but time uh, that it takes to fix it, but also in, in kind of your public image. Um, a good example of this is a couple of weeks ago, Yahoo had an outage in their in their free email service, and uh, it, you know a lot of people had some issues. Uh, Yahoo, you know, it, it didn't look good for them that their services were down. Uh, I'm sure they lost some revenue because they they serve ads in their free email service. But even worse than that, Microsoft and some other competitors came in, and you know they were out on Twitter saying, "Hey, look, switch from Yahoo to Microsoft's Hotmail." And not that Microsoft's Hotmail email service is any more stable than Yahoo, uh, it's not. But your competitors can use your downtime, your website downtime, whatever, uh, against you to lure your customers away. So it is, uh, it is something that's pretty important for companies. Um, overall, why I guess why I've heard that Nagios is important to people in the industry, whether they're um, tech people or uh, kind of managers, is that you know it gives them a great deal of capabilities and what it can do. Um, Nagios is often used to replace a lot of other very expensive, very capable commercial solutions that are out there on the market, um, you know, like OpenView, uh, Tivoli, things that you wouldn't think that uh, a, a free or open source application would be capable of, but it is if you if you know what what to do and you utilize it, I guess, to its fullest. Um, it gives you a lot of flexibility in what to do. Uh, what, what you're going to do with it. Um, but Nagios has a huge community behind it. it. It's one of the, there are very few monitoring products on the market that have a really big community, sorry, behind it. <laughs> um, I, I was going to turn this off this morning, but forgot. So, but Nagios has a pretty big uh, community behind it. Um, and that's really it, one of the, one of the, uh, you know, really good way to see that is the number of add-ons that are available for Nagios, the number of plugins, the number of add-on projects. Um, there's a huge community. There's a lot of community support that's available. Um, and that's kind of rare in, in monitoring projects. Um, there's some companies out there that have pretty big communities behind them. For an open source monitoring uh, project, Nagios is, is a really big community. And it, it, you know the cost is extremely competitive. Um, you know, our commercial product is priced very competitively with with market. You know, other people in the market, but you know, Nagios Core doesn't cost anything to acquire it. But even if you you know buy the commercial product, it it, it pales in comparison to some of the things we hear from people. Um, you know, we've gotten a number of calls in the past week, a couple of weeks, from people that switched from other solutions, and I won't name what they.